Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks. I am King Keith for a day and we're going to do something very special in honour of the upcoming coronation of King Charles III. If you missed Charles I and II, tough. It was a long time ago. I'm going to make a dish that has been specially chosen for the coronation lunch, coronation quiche. So the last time we had a coronation was like 70 years ago uh, for Queen Elizabeth, the two, and the special dish for that was coronation chicken. But the, the coronation chicken was invented specially for, for that event. Uh, this quiche isn't a special invention, it's just something that the royals like to have now and again. It's very simple, spinach, broad beans and tarragon. So let's have a go. I should point out I'm not doing the exact recipe as published because many people have tried that already and it doesn't work. It might do for the chef that wrote it down, but he didn't write down all the details, so a lot of people have come unstuck with it. Anyway, I know what I'm doing, so let's get on with it. Coronation quiche, oh yeah! If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. You know the drill. Ding-a-ding-ding. -ding. I'm going to make the pastry first. You can use, obviously, shop-bought pastry and you'll need, according to the recipe, a 250 gram block. Probably that's because that is the smallest size that they sell. I have got a flan dish with a removable bottom and that is 23 centimetres just over nine inches uh, diameter. So I've got 200 grams of plain all-purpose flour, 75 grams of cold butter cut into small bits, half a teaspoon of salt, and two or three tablespoons of water, just enough to make it come together into a dough. Again, the original recipe differs because they use half lard, half butter, which is an odd choice for a vegetarian dish, but there you go. And also they use milk, not water, which again, I've never made pastry with milk. Maybe it works, maybe it won't, but I'm not going to do that. So first of all, I need to mix the salt in with the flour and then rub in the bits of butter, just using your fingertips. And eventually you'll get a mixture that looks like coarse sand or breadcrumbs or, you know, something crummy in a good way. There we go, a bowl full of crumbs. So now I'll just fold in some water. I think I've done this before where I, I actually ended up needing seven tablespoons to make it stick. So that's five. I can see why the non-cooks who've written about their experience in making this quiche have become somewhat frustrated because, you know, uh, that was seven, eight, nine tablespoons of liquid. I mean, I could stick it together, squeeze it together, maybe. Ten. 11. Yeah, that'll do, I think. Now we want to wrap that in plastic film, stick it in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Okay, spinach. Now this is another trap for inexperienced cooks. The palace recipe calls for 180 grams of cooked spinach. Now, if you've never cooked spinach before, you won't know that a wheelbarrow full of the stuff will yield a thimble full of cooked spinach, something like that. It's packed with water. You've got to get rid of as much water as you can, otherwise you'll get a, a runny pie, a runny quiche, it won't set. So I have got 250 grams. I don't fancy the idea of 180 grams of cooked spinach in my quiche. I need to melt a knob of butter in a pan. When the butter's melted, just add the spinach. Yeah, really, all of it, because it'll only take a couple of minutes for that to shrink down so it all fits. And we'll sprinkle some salt on that. Right, that is wilted and there's, you know, a lot of liquid coming out of it now. Popeye has a lot to answer for. Okay, I think that will do for now. So I'll uh, decant it into a colander. Let that cool down and dry out. Your other ingredients, you want 175 ml of double cream, heavy cream, 125 ml of milk, three medium eggs, 
about 150 grams of grated mature cheddar and 100 grams of broad beans or soybeans also known as edamame beans so these were frozen i've just had them sitting in boiling water and you'll also need some salt and white pepper and the magic ingredient that you might struggle to get fresh tarragon normally with a thing like this you would expect it to be announced months ahead of time so that supermarkets could get their stuff in but it only was released uh, about a week ago the, the recipe so yeah fresh tarragon you might find it in you know like waitrose sainsbury's big bigger stores and posher stores but if you can't get it fresh you can use half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of dried tarragon for the fresh tarragon you want one tablespoon of it chopped i got this from our friendly local farm shop so if you're anywhere near leeds you could pop into whiteley's farm shop in putsey so we'll just smear some butter on the inside of the plantain and this is a bit of an experiment the recipe says that you should blind bake the pastry case uh, which means to partly bake it i usually do that but i'm thinking you know if, if you're you're making this for the first time and you don't know what you're doing so you know that's an extra step of faff that may not be necessary so i'm going to have a go without blind baking it so that can't be bad if it works so we want some flour on the worktop some flour on the rolling pin as well and roll it you want to roll a disc about five millimeters about a quarter of an inch thick I reckon that'll do, so just roll it over your rolling pin. There's a bit of flour on that side and that is good. That will also help the non-stickness. Grab a bit of spare dough and push it right up to the edge. If you do it with your fingers, you're likely to damage the pastry with your fingernails. Okay. I'll just trim it. Alrighty, here's my spinach, cooked and as dry as I can get it really. This isn't all of it, this, this is uh, it's about 130 grams, which I think will be plenty. A lot of people that have made this and reported back also complain that there is too much spinach. It's, you know, overpowering, so. I'm happy to reduce the amount. Now you want to preheat your oven to 170 degrees Celsius. If it's a fan oven, a convection oven, that's 190 for a conventional one, and that is gas five. I'm using an air fryer oven, so that's the same as a convection oven. Right, here's the pastry, nicely trimmed and quite a substantial lump left over. Right, now I'm going to chop up some tarragon. Probably enough. It's a bit aniseedy. So if you don't like that flavour, don't use it, use something else, but I do like it a lot. Layer half the cheese on the bottom. I should have done this before. We need to mix the liquid ingredients. So it's the milk and the cream, the eggs. That was for Brenda Rigdon, <laughs> who told me about that trick, which, you know, gives you a random smashed egg and one completely unsmashed egg. A slight pause while I find the whiskey thing. Not the whiskey thing, the whiskey thing. The thing for whisking, the whisk. And we'll have a pinch of salt and white pepper. And the tarragon. Keep whisking that till the eggs properly combined. I've drained the broad beans. This this is quite an odd choice for, for this quiche. Um, you know they're, they're quite large and chunky, and they you know not very common. I I don't think I've ever had broad beans before, not knowingly. I think these are known as father beans in other parts of the world, and. The spinach. Pour in the milky, eggy, creamy, mixy. That's good. Don't um, <laughs> don't overfill it. And finally, the remaining 
cheese. And we stick that in the oven for 35 to 40 minutes. The <laughs> original recipe, I don't know what planet they're on, they say 20 to 25 minutes and you know, you, you will have a, an unset quiche if you do that. But you know, commercial ovens are completely different from domestic ones, so I'm sure the King's chef wouldn't lie to us. Right, in we go. Okay, we've had 35 minutes, so let's have a look. Oh wow. Well, I reckon that's done. That will collapse down a little bit, I think. So I'll just leave that a few minutes and get it out of the tin. Yes. Ta da! <laughs> okay. Ooh, still a bit hot. Let's get it off the bottom bit. You could eat that now, but quiche isn't at its best when it's hot. It's better when it's warm and it's fine when it's cold, but not fringe cold. <laughs> I'm too tall with this crown. I can't fit in the picture. Right, let's chop a wedge out of this. I can smell spinach. Hey! Well, look at that. Well, it looks fantastic. And now it's taste test time with special guest, Her Royal Highness Majesty, Queen Consort, Keefe Consort, Mrs. Keefe Cox. Hello. Hello. Like he said. Yeah. <laughs> Get stuck in. Oh yeah, I like the way my piece is bigger than yours. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> vegetarian. Uh-huh. Only the leanings. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbours are going to wonder what we're doing. Ah. You know? <laughs> Just having a quiche. <laughs> <laughs> Confession. This is version two. The first you one I made. You pre-baked yeah. the pastry base, didn't you? And blind, then you blind baked. It. Yeah. That's the, that's the term. This one, I didn't. And it's every bit as good. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yesterday, um, yes, you were extremely surprised at how good it was because not having vegetarian leanings. <laughs> it wasn't at all keen on the prospect. Well, it wasn't just that. It was like spinach and broad beans and... Yeah, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they actually are very, very nice. Yeah. The... the <laughs> wouldn't you like a hand, darling? No. So, the quiche itself comes out very moist. The broad beans... I was... I, it seemed an odd thing to put in something like this, but then I realised it, it gives you that sort of um, bulk, that bite that you get if you did have, you know, animal parts in it. That's what I think anyway. Mm. But it just tastes, it just tastes so good. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when anybody says quiche to me, it's hard to get excited. But I think this is really yeah. delicious. So I don't know if it's going to be remembered like coronation chicken, who can say? It's mm. it's really good. It is. It's and really a lot better than well, it sounds. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's how good it is. Yesterday, there was one of those. By halfway through this morning, there was none left, and it wasn't me eating all of it. And I'm perfectly happy to be eating this again. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Really yeah. good. Fantastic. Thanks for watching, and see you at the next coronation. And <laughs> see you next really time. Really unlikely. <laughs> Come on, see you next time. Okay.